Welcome to this video on parallel RLC circuits. In a previous video, we've looked at parallel RL circuits and parallel RC circuits, which involve a resistor in parallel with an inductor or a resistor in parallel with a capacitor. And in this video, we're going to take things one step further by having all three of these components in parallel. We've got a resistor here, an inductor, and a capacitor all in parallel and we're going to see how that affects our results here and we're going to treat this problem in the same way as we dealt with uh, the RL circuits and the RC circuits in the previous video which I'd recommend watching if you haven't already we're going to look at separate currents first of all going through each component so I'm going to mark these on here as first of all IR the current going through the resistor we've got IL the current going through the inductor and we've got IC the current going through the capacitor and once we've evaluated these separate currents we're then going to combine them to evaluate the supply current which I'll mark on there as well as IS so to begin let's look at some component values that we're going to use in this particular example Okay, so we can see here that our capacitor has a value of 20 microfarads. Our inductor has a value of 10 millihenries. Our resistor has a value of 5 ohms. And our voltage supplied here is 10 volts AC with a frequency of 200 hertz. So first of all, we need to recognize that we have two reactive components in our circuit here we've got an inductor and a capacitor and both of these components are going to have a reactance so let's first of all begin by calculating some of those parameters we can say um, that xc the reactance of a capacitor is equal to 1 over 2 pi fc and by substituting some values into there we know that uh, 1 over 2 pi multiplied by the frequency which in this case is 200 multiplied by C the capacitance which is 20 microfarads so that's 20 times 10 to the minus 6 and that's all on the bottom of my fraction there and when I calculate that value I come out with a reactance of 39.79 ohms that's for my capacitor there. Very similarly, I'm going to calculate the reactance of our inductor, XL. And the formula for the reactance of an inductor is 2 pi FL. And again, substituting some values in there, 2 pi multiplied by F, the frequency, which is 200. And multiplied by L, the um, inductance, which is 10 millihenries, 10 times 10 to the minus 3 and we come out with a value of 12.57 ohms so now that we know either the resistance in the case of the resistor here or the reactance of each component we can now go ahead and just use Ohm's law to calculate the current um, I, R, I, L, and I, C, the current going through each component. So simply by using a little bit of Ohm's law in both instances here, uh, or in all three instances, I should say, we can get three currents. We've simply said that uh, current is voltage divided by reactance or voltage divided by resistance for each of the three components. So the, cu the current... Uh, through the capacitor is the voltage divided by the reactance of the capacitor and the voltage in the question we said was 10 volts and the reactance that we calculated uh, for the capacitor was 39.79 uh, ohms and so we come out with a current of 0.25 amps through the capacitor there and likewise we've done similar for the uh, inductor and the resistor we have 0.8 amps uh, through the inductor and we have uh, two amps uh, two amps through the resistor there 
So finally, um, just like we said in the previous video, the last step is to evaluate the supply current. And the temptation here is simply to say, well, I have three currents uh, that are all in parallel with one another, um, all being fed by the same supply current. Uh, therefore, the supply current must simply be all three of these currents added together. And unfortunately, that's not the correct way to go about finding the supply current. We need to uh, go through one extra step, which involves drawing a phasor diagram. The reason it's helpful to use a phasor diagram in this instance is because it helps us to visualize the phase differences between these three currents. Now, in our previous video, we talked about the fact that there are phase differences between currents that travel through resistive components like resistors and inductive uh, or capacitive components. And what we said was that um, currents that travel through an inductor lag by 90 degrees and currents that travel through capacitors or capacitive components lead by 90 degrees. And we can represent that a little bit more easily on our phasor diagram. Let's start off with our resistive current first of all. And we know that there's no phase shift with a resistive current. And in a phasor diagram, we just represent that by our phasor or, or vector or, or arrow pointing to the right. And so all I'll do is just point um, my IR resistive current to the right hand side there. And we said that that resistive current was two amps. Next, we have our inductive current IL. And we said in our previous video that currents through an inductor lag by 90 degrees. And so in a phasor diagram, anything that's lagging tilts downwards from our horizontal starting position. Anything that's leading tilts upwards from our starting position. And so here in our phasor diagram, we have something that's lagging by 90 degrees. It's going to be tilting downwards by 90 degrees. And so what we'd expect to see is something along the lines of this. We'll have our inductive current IL pointing downwards at 90 degrees there. Finally, we have our capacitive current. And we said that our capacitive current was 0 0.25 amps. And anything that travels through a capacitor, um, any current that, that, that travels through a capacitor is, is by definition leading by 90 degrees. And so we're gonna draw that capacitive current uh, tilting upwards here by 90 degrees and that is IC and that is 0.25 amps. So you'll also notice, I don't suppose I've done a particularly good job, but I've tried to draw my phasor diagram roughly to scale, um, where the, the, the size of the current corresponds with the length of the arrow. So now that we have our phasor diagram set up, we're going to find the resultant, uh, which is going to give us our supply current here, the current that's supplying the whole circuit, all three of these currents. To do that though, I want to make one more step with our phasor diagram, and it's just a, a method of simplification really to make things easier. If you have a look at these two elements here, IC and IL, you'll see that they are opposing one another. One of them is pointing directly upwards, and one of them is pointing directly downwards. And what we can do is we can resolve these two to simplify our diagram a little bit. And the way we're going to do that is to say, well, if IC is pointing upwards by 0 0.25 and IL is pointing downwards by 0 0.8, we can actually simplify our diagram and resolve it um, into something that's hopefully a little bit easier to follow. So if I move my diagram up just a little bit there, just to make some room below, what we can do is we can hopefully produce a simplified diagram just below here which will look like this. First of all, um, IR will be unchanged. And so what I'll do is draw something similar, hopefully, along the bottom here. IR 
which is equal to 2 amps. Now, what I've simplified are these upward and downward elements here, the capacitive current and the inductive current. And hopefully you can see that if I have, let's let's forget about currents and, and, and whatnot for now, if I have something that's pointing upwards by uh, 0.25 and decreasing or going down by uh, 0.8, then the resultant is going to look something like this. It's going to be um, a downward resultant of 0.55. So I'll represent that on my diagram here as Ix, the current going through both reactive elements, and we'll say that that's 0 0.55 amps. So now that we've simplified our diagram here, what we can do is, similar to our previous video, we can use Pythagoras' theorem to find the resultant of these two remaining vectors. We have IR pointing to the right, uh, that's our phasor for the resistive current, and we have this combined uh, reactive current IX, which is um, pointing downwards by 0.55 amps. So together, we're hopefully going to see something that looks like this. We're going to have IS, which is our supply current, which is the combination of these two vectors, uh, these two phases. And to find the length of IS, we can use Pythagoras' theorem, just like in our last video. And what we can also do, similar to our last video, is find the phase angle of the um, the supply current. So we can mark that phase angle on here um, as well. So using Pythagoras' theorem, first of all, we can say that I S squared is equal to I R squared plus I X squared. And just by rearranging that slightly, we can see that I S is equal to the square root of I R squared plus I X squared. And we know that I R is 2, so we can say 2 squared, plus Ix squared, and Ix we said is 0 0.55 squared. And if we work that out, we come up with an answer of 2.07 amps. So our resulting supply current here is 2.07 amps. The last thing we said we would do is calculate the phase angle that we have marked on our diagram here. And to do that, similar to our last video, we're going to use uh, the tan function because one of our trigonometric identities is to say that uh, theta is equal to tan to the minus 1 opposite over adjacent. Now, if I refer back down to our diagram here, we can imagine this is a triangle, a right angle triangle, um, with the right angle up in this corner here. All I would have to do is move this uh, this this arrow here, this this phaser, and imagine it was placed over at this side instead, and we have our complete right angle triangle. And so our marked angle here has three sides: the hypotenuse, the longest side, the opposite side, and the adjacent side. And so by saying tan to the minus one opposite over adjacent, we're actually saying Ix over Ir. And so I'll put those into my formula as well. We can say tan to the minus 1, Ix over Ir. And that's going to give us our phase angle. And if I calculate that, I come out with an angle of 15.38 degrees. So hopefully this has been a useful video to illustrate how to solve a problem that has uh, three different components uh, in parallel in an AC circuit, in this case, a parallel RLC circuit. In our next video, we're going to look at uh, more parallel RLC circuits of slightly different arrangements. And we're also going to talk about the topic of resonance as well.